good to go when you're ready. Okay. You can hear me okay? Yep. Okay, I'm standing here um, on the stair steps of a beautiful French colonial home uh, designed by Danielson Cook for Conrad and Grace Hauska, uh, built in 1890. On February 19, 1903, Conrad was, um, in the morning, Conrad was to join with two of his friends for a morning stroll down, uh, down to down, where they worked in downtown Tacoma. And so follow me as I head on down to the sidewalk and talk a little bit about the two people that were with him and the decision they made that day that had real historic consequences for the city of Tacoma. So follow me on down and I'll tell you the rest of the story. So it was here that, um, it was around 10.30 in the morning and Conrad met with two of his good friends, all of whom had served on the Tacoma School Board. One of whom was Alfred Lister, whose brother Ernest uh, became governor of the state of Washington uh, a few years later. Uh, Alfred owned a, a foundry and, and also Eric Rosling, who uh, was a very prominent attorney. Conrad was a mortician, uh, but had also served as the Pierce County uh, coroner for three terms and also on the uh, Tacoma School Board. And so they started walking in this direction, right down here, and eventually uh, they um, saw, once, as they did every morning as they did their stroll, uh, the remains of the ruined uh, tourist hotel that day, uh, 1903. Uh, the Northern Pacific Railroad that, that had r removed 80,000 bricks uh, from the, the unfinished hotel was prepared to tear down what remained uh, to, to essentially raise um, remains of the hotel, and clear the land, and uh, put it up for, for sale. And Conrad had this idea. He said, wouldn't that be a wonderful high school? And so the three of them met with William Coffey, who was the chair of the school board, uh, shared their idea. He then contacted uh, the architect for the Tacoma School District, Frederick Heath, and asked uh, Mr. Heath to take a look at the remains to see if something could be done. Uh, Heath called back in an hour and said, I can make this into a wonderful high school, a renowned high school. Uh, and uh, the following day, the school board met I contacted the railroad, uh, purchased what remained of the hotel and the adjoining gulch, uh, and uh, in 1906, uh, Stadium High School opened its doors. And as they say, the rest is history. What a great day it was in February of 1903. A great day for Tacoma. Well, I'm a proud alum of Stadium High School. And I got to say, a few years ago, there were some folk from up north, from Seattle, and they asked me to kind of take them through the grounds. And one of the people said to me, uh, asked me a question. He said, uh, uh, Bill, uh, is it true that Elizabeth Taylor stayed here when this was a hotel? And my reply was, well, if Elizabeth Taylor was 130 years old, yeah, that was a joke. Uh, this was never really a hotel. It started out to be one, but it never became one. Here's the story. In 1889, the Northern Pacific Railroad and Tacoma Land Company felt that it was important that uh, another hotel be built in Tacoma, another grand hotel. Tacoma was the boomiest of the boom towns back then. It was growing, fastest growing city in the western United States. There was a grand hotel down where, on A Street, where A Street is, and, and about 9th and A, where the Russell Building now stands. That was the first grand hotel. This was to be the second. And so they, the railroad purchased from the Blackwell family what was called Blackwell Point for $80,000 plus, which in today's dollars would be over $2 million actually. That's the land that the Stadium High School sits on, it's Blackwell Point. In 1891, a uh, hotel uh, construction began. Uh, it was designed by Hewitt and Hewitt, the architectural firm out of uh, Philadelphia. And the hotel was to be even bigger and grander than the one down on what is now A Street. Construction began in 1891, uh, it was moving forward. Uh, in 1893, the Great Depression hit, the railroad claimed a bankruptcy, and uh, all construction ended. Uh, the materials for the construction were put in what uh, was a half-built hotel. It was boarded up, the idea that construction would begin once the economy turned. 
But in 1898, a very mysterious fire uh, took place in, in the unfinished hotel. Uh, arson was uh, uh, the suspicion. Uh, the inside of the hotel was gutted, and the fire was so intense that people up north in Seattle thought that the city was burning, actually. Uh, that's how intense it was. And uh, the hotel and what remained of it, the ruins of the ho hotel, uh, stood for up until 1903. And during that period of time, between uh, 1898 and 1903, the railroad removed over 80,000 bricks from the face, fa facing bricks from the building, unfinished building, and uh, used those bricks to build uh, stations, railroad stations in Idaho and Montana. And we know that Conrad Hauska and Alfred Lister and Eric Rosling approached uh, what remained of the building, and uh, we know the story that they convinced the school district to uh, make this into a, a wonderful hotel. Frederick Heath was the architect. He was convinced he could do something grand. He used the concept of what the hotel was to be uh, for his architectural design. And uh, the so Stadium High School, which was then known as Tacoma High School, opened its doors in 1906. Uh, it was very controversial, uh, but the chair of the school board, uh, William Coffey and Charles Drury, another school board member, were strong advocates. And the citizens passed eventually the bond issue that allowed for the construction of this great hotel. And uh, in 2006, uh, the restoration was completed on the 100th anniversary of Stadium High School. Uh, I might note that Stadium High School was named after the Stadium Bowl. We'll talk a little bit about that. We'll walk down to the bowl and say a few words about, about that, which is also a remarkable achievement. So this is an incredible building, and what a magnificent uh, symbol of uh, what makes Tacoma great. Let's go down to the down to Stadium Bowl and say a few words about that. Uh, behind me is the Stadium Bowl, and the back uh, in 1909, uh, the citizens of Tacoma policymakers wanted to do something special in light of the Alaska Yukon exhibition that was going on up in Seattle. That was the World's Fair, so the decision was made to build the largest uh, municipally owned uh, stadium uh, in the United States. Uh, and the construction began in 1910 in what was called uh, Old, Old Women's Gulch. When the school district bought uh, the remains of the hotel, he also bought the, adjour the adjoining gulch. The question was, what do we do with that, uh, that land? There was a lot of discussion and debate. And again, the final decision was to build this magnificent stadium. So in 1910, uh, the stadium was constructed. It could hold up to over 30,000 people um, at the time. I had a spectacular view of Commencement Bay. Uh, all sorts of famous people came and spoke in Stadium Bowl. Uh, Theodore Roosevelt came here and spoke before over 30,000 people. President Woodrow Wilson spoke here, as did uh, Warren Harding. Uh, Babe Ruth uh, hit a baseball uh, out of the stadium. Uh, General Pershing came here after World War I. And uh, the University of Southern California Trojan football team played its first game outside the state of California right here against Oregon State on Thanksgiving Day 1914. Uh, it was a fundraising event for the Belgium Relief Fund. Uh, Texas A&M, uh, the fifth ranked uh, team in the country, played a football game here against Washington State in 1941. The Penn State Nittany Lions uh, flew all the way across uh, the United States to play Washington State here uh, in 1948. University of Washington played games in the Stadium Bowl. So this has an incredible history about it. Uh, the earthquake uh, led to the condemnation of the bowl, but uh, uh, it was restored later. Not the entire bowl, uh, just about half of it remains, but the history of it's pretty extraordinary and it's really made a mark in Tacoma's history.